So after 30 years, three decades, China economy has a rapid growing in the, in the past. But now we face a lot, a lot of uh, challenges. So like pollution, population, and uh, we change the economy structures. The one of the challenges is education. So everyone knows education is long-term challenge, not today. We have to face a lot of uh, today's problem and uh, uh, the future's problems. So now the, one of the challenges in education is uh, cultural barriers. So how can we overcome the cultural barriers to educate our students and future leaders? So everyone knows in the, in the past, like uh, 5,000 years ago, China has their culture. And uh, 3,500 3, years ago, there's uh, Kongzi the set up the Confucianism and the Lao, Dao, a lot of uh, cultural uh, schools. We call this 100 schools of thought. And today, the history flows today. So today, we face how can go to the, the entire the world, the modern world. We need education reform, absolutely. So in the past, we have a different style to teaching and the learning. But now, for both teaching and the learning, we need deepen reform. That should fit today's development. So you know, we have the internet, we have a lot of tools, but the internet can bring the people closer and closer, but we still need a face to face. So we try to set up a platform. That platform will attract students all around the whole world, come to China, to Beijing, to Tsinghua, to understand China. So when you study whatever you, you, you try to study, you have to understanding and you have to get a trust. So we try to bring the students to China to learn China, understand China, and build up the trust in the future. In the past, we have brought a lot of students to China already. You know, today, I mean, this year, China has uh, over 200,000 students go to the US only. Over half a million students go to the whole world, Europe, Australia, everywhere. But less students come back, come to China. So we try to attract a lot of students to China. We, we build up that platform, and that platform will changing, starting from a teaching style. The one is the interactive study. We'll break up the classroom to the very small classroom, interactive, and then we bring students to the field trip. We go to the Tianjin, like the developed area, we go to the rural area in the inland China, and also, that's the second one. The third one, we use our current teachers, current leaders, to teach future leaders, like domestic leaders and the international leaders to teach our students. So that teach will give students experiment, experience. And we use that experimental, exper experimental and the practical training for our future leaders. One, the students live together, they're dining together, they play together, they study together today, in the future. They are the leaders in the, in, in the different countries, different world, and they can, they are friends, and they can talk to each other. They can friendly make this, this crisis get down, get a solution. So one day you can imagine, so the one leaders from China, and another leaders from the US, they can talk to each other, this, because they are classmates a long time ago. So we build up that platform, we tear down the wall, bring them together in that platform. That's a Schwarzman, we call the Schwarzman College. As Schwarzman said, it's, uh, so in the 21st century, China is no longer an elective course. China is a core curriculum. Thank you so much. My question, lead question is uh, how to overcome cultural barriers in leadership education. Thank you so much.